Hi everyone, in this video we want to talk about how to work with PyCharm debugger tool or let's say PyCharm debug in Python programming language. So please stay tuned. So let's go to the first example and remember we are going to cover about four or five examples in order to explain PyCharm debug. So this is the first example. So first of all, let's define a couple of variables. For example, a equals to b, b equals to 2, c equals to 3. And after that, we want to print the c variable, which is 3. In order to debug this code, we should put a breakpoint. For example, suppose that I want to put a breakpoint here. And maybe you ask, what do I mean by a breakpoint? I mean, for example, here, I have put a breakpoint at line 5. It means that we are going to run the earlier codes but the running process is going to stop is going to break at this uh, point so this is called a break point and for example maybe from this line to the end of the code we want to let's say run the code line by line so this is a break point which stops the running process at this Point. But maybe you ask, how can I put a breakpoint? For example, suppose that I want to put a breakpoint here, I mean in line 5. In order to do so, we should click on this gutter. This uh, gray margin here is called gutter. It is called gutter. It is called gutter. So this is the gutter. And if I want to put a breakpoint in this line, in line 5, I mean, I should click on uh, this place in the gutter. I should simply click on it and you can see that a red point which is the breakpoint appears and if I click on it again you can see that it disappears if I click on it again you can see it appears if I click on it again you can see it disappears and remember if the breakpoint term sounds a little bit arcane to you don't worry about it we are going to study different examples and in this video until the end of this video you are going to better understand the breakpoint concept so please don't worry about it just now so here if I right click on this page and I click debug code 01 which is the name of my code you can see that the name of my code is code 01 so I want to click this one debug code 01 so you can see that we have run the previous lines for example this is a breakpoint and you can see that the previous lines has been one for example you can see that the variable a is equals to one i mean one has been assigned to the a variable and also in the variables panel here you can see that we have a variable called a which its value is one so remember that the previous lines has been one and suppose that we want to run this code from this line i mean the breakpoint until the end of the code line by line in order to do so, we should use a step over in this pie chart. So here you can see that we have an icon called a step over, which we can use to step over each line of the code. So here, if I press this icon, you can see that, okay, this line has been run. And you can see that two has been assigned to the variable B. And you can see pie charm is highlighting this line, I mean line six. It means that when pie charm highlights a line in debug it means that it is on the verge of running this line it doesn't mean it has run this line it means it is on the verge of i mean it is going to run this line so here if i uh, click on this step over icon you can see that this line has been run and you can see three has been assigned to the c variable and here we are going to print this c variable we are going to print this c variable so if I click on this step over, you can see that the console is blinking. It means that something is happening in the console. And you can see we have printed the C variable in the console. So you can see that this is the console tab and this is the debugger tab. To better clarify the concept of debugger tool in PyCharm, uh, let's take another example. I mean the second example. In this example, suppose that we want to print the values between two numbers. For example, let's say A and B. For example, we want to print the numbers between 1 and and three in order to do so we define a variable called let's say a which we assign one to this variable i mean a equals to one and we define another variable which is called b and we assign three to this variable so suppose that we want to print the numbers between a and b i mean for example in this example one two three so here we simply type for i in a range of a uh, and b plus 1 and maybe you ask why b plus 1 and not b because this second value we know that in range function in python programming language this second value is exclusive so if you want the numbers 
uh, between a to b we should write a and b plus one because this second value is exclusive so after that we want to print b i and you can see that in each iteration you can see that we are iterating over a to b and we want to print each i i mean each number when we are iterating over this range of numbers and for example suppose that we want to start debugging at this line it means that we want to run the previous lines and we want to start debugging at this line and now i should right click on this page and click on this debug code 01 and remember this is this code 01 is the name of my code so i click on this one and you can see that the debugging panel the debugging window appears and you can see the previous lines has been run for example you can see that one has been assigned to the a variable and three has been assigned to b variable so the previous lines i mean the previous lines before this breakpoint has been run so from this line of the code until the end of the code we are going to step over each line i mean we are going to run the code line by line in order to do so we should click on this step over icon so if i click on this step over icon you can see that now i is equals to one why because we are iterating over this range of numbers and in the first iteration i is equal to one and here we are going to print the i and if i click on this icon step over icon you can see that the console is blinking it means that something is happening in the console and you can see that it has printed one i mean it has printed i which in the first iteration i is equal to one and if i click on this step over icon you can see now i is equal to two and we are going to print the i and you can see in the console it has printed two and if we click on this step over icon you can see that now i is equal to three and if i click on this step over icon you can see that in the console it has printed three and if i click on this step over icon you can see that it has finished its debugging so let's take another example suppose that we want to define a function called double and we want to pass an argument which is x to this function and this function is going to return x times 2 i mean this function is going to double the input so for example here maybe i want to double 5 um, i mean i want to double this number and here i want to store the results in a variable let's say called result and here i want to print the result variable so if i run the code if i run the code not debug the code you can see that the output is 10 but maybe we want to debug this code from this line until the end of the code so after putting this breakpoint i should right click on this page and i should click on debug code 01 which is the name of my code so we can see that the debug panel the debug window appears and we can see that here we are going to step over each line of the code for example i click on this step over icon and you can see the double of five is 10 and it is uh it is assigning the result i mean 10 to the result variable and here we are going to print the result variable and here if i I click on this uh, step over icon you can see that the console is blinking and it means that something is happening in the console and you can see that the result has been printed but maybe you ask how can i go inside that function i mean this function and not just step over this line how can i just step into this function and see what is happening in the function itself in order to do so i mean in order to step into that function that double function and see what is happening inside that function we should right click on this page and we should click on this debug code 01 and after that you can see that the debug window appears and here instead of a step over instead of stepping over each line of the code we should step into my code why because we want to step into that function and see what is happening inside that function so here we can see that we have something called a step into my code this is a icon that you can use for stepping into your code so i should click on this icon and you can see now we are going to my function you can see that the function is taking x as the input which is now five and it, and it is going to return x times 2 which is 10 so i should click on this icon and you can see that uh, the result of this function is 10 which it is assigning this number to the result variable and now we are going to print 
the results variable. So if I click on this one, you can see that the console is blinking. It means that something is happening in the console and you can see that the result variable, which is 10 has been printed. So you can see that in the stepping over, you, you are stepping over each line of the code without going inside any function or classes or such other things. But here, when we step into my code, we are going to inside each function or each class or whatever that you want. So you can see that there is a difference between stepping over each line of the code and stepping into the code. And here, suppose that we want to print a number, a random integer number between one to three. Why? Because this is an example in order to show something called a step into. So here, suppose this example that we want to generate an integer number between one to three. In order to do so, we use the random package. We use the random package so we can see that we have imported random package or let's say random module or random library. These terms are used interchangeably. I mean, module, library, package. And here I should simply type random. I mean, I want to use this, this random package and I simply type rand int. It means that I want to use the rand int function which generates random integer number between two numbers. I want to generate random integer number between one to three. And I want to store the results in a variable, let's say called result. And here I want to print the results. So here, if I run the code, if I run the code and not debug the code, you can see that the output of the second one, I mean, this result, which is the random integer number between one to three is two. So if I run the code again, you can see now the output is different. Why? Because this is a random process. Because this is a random process, each time you run the code, it is possible to get a different result. So here, if I run the code, you can see that we get the same output, but it is possible to get another output. Why? Because it's a random process. And if I run the code, you can see that we get two. If I run the code, you can see that we get three. If I run the code, you can see we get one. So this is the thing that we want. But maybe we want to start debugging from this line of the code. And in order to do so, we right click on this page and we click on this debug. And you can see that debug window appears. So here I should click on this step into my code and you can see that it steps into my function. So this is a function which the input is five and you can see it is going to return 10. So if I click on this step into my code, you can see the result is 10 and this 10 has been assigned to a variable called result. And here we are going to here we are going to print the results variable and you can see the console is blinking. It means something is happening in the console. And here, if I click on this step into my code, you can see that we have imported random package. And here we are going to step into uh, this step into my code. So here, if I click on this icon, you can see that it, it steps over this line of code and the result is two. But maybe you ask, how can I step into this one, which is not my code, but I want to step into it. For example, suppose that we have a class from another package, we have a function from another package, and we want to step into that one. Of course, that is not my code, but I want to step into that one. In order to do so, we should right click on this and again, click on this debug. And here, we shouldn't click on the step into my code. For example, here, uh, if I step into my code, you can see that the result is 10 and we are printing the result variable, which is 10. But here, after printing this random package, we don't want to step into my code because, because this is not my code. This is a package code. This is a library's code. So I should uh, click on this step into and not step into my code. So if I click on this one, you can see it is steps into the code of that package and you can see that it is going to step or it is going to step into each line of the code in that uh, random package. But if you want to step out of this uh, package, we should click on this one, step out and you can see now we are on this line in our code. And here, if I click on a step uh, into, you can see that it has generated a random integer number between one to three, and it has assigned the result to a variable called result. And here we are going to print the results variable. So you can see something is happening in the console and it has printed two, which is that number that has been generated between one to three.
So here is a summary. A step over means that we are going to run the code line by line without going into any function, any class, or etc. The step into my code means that we are going to run each line of the code and going inside any function, any class, or etc., which is my code, not other modules code. A step into means that we are going to run each line of the code and also stepping into any function, any class, or etc., both in my code and other packages code. And a step out is very clear. We're just stepping out. Okay, consider this example. We have to find the double function. And here we can see that we are doubling five and we are restoring the results in a variable called A. And here we are printing A. So if I right click and click on this debug code 01, you can see that the debug tool appears. And here, if I, for example, step over this line of code, you can see now A is equals to 10. For example, I want to calculate something. For example, maybe I want to calculate what is the result of A plus 2. I know it is very simple, but this is an example. I don't want to print anything inside this code, but maybe I want to see what is the A plus 2 output, for example. Let's say, what is the result of A plus 2? What is the result of a divided by two or such a thing like this i don't want to uh, print anything inside this code but i want to see what is the output in order to do so i should click on this evaluate expression icon which is like the calculator so i click on this and here i can type whatever i want for example i want to see what is the output what is the output of a plus let's say three and if i click on this evaluate button you can see the result is 13 i mean a is 10 and of course a plus 3 is 13. maybe i want to calculate 8 divided by 2 let's say so if i click on this one you can see the result is fine so this evaluate expression is used to uh, evaluate whatever you want without printing anything inside this code without uh, putting any code inside this code and you can simply evaluate whatever you want inside this evaluate expression icon which is here okay let's take another example here we have to find a couple of variables a equals to one b equals to two we are printing b c equals to three d equals to four e equals to five and here we are printing e and remember we can have different breakpoints for example maybe i want to have a breakpoint here in line five and i want to have another breakpoint in line uh, let's say 12 there it is and what does it mean it means that it is going to run the previous lines before uh, getting into this uh, first breakpoint so for example if i right click and click on this debug you can see that it has run the previous lines before the first breakpoint you can see that a is equals to one and it stops at the first breakpoint and if i want to run run from this first breakpoint until the second breakpoint i should click on this icon which is the resume program and if i click on this one you can see that it runs the code from this breakpoint until the second breakpoint and it is stopped at the second breakpoint so here for example i can step over from this uh, second breakpoint so if i click on this one you can see that it, it steps over this line and it has assigned 5 to the e variable and here we are printing the e variable which the output is 5. so we can have multiple breakpoints because maybe we want to run a part of code and after that we want to go to let's say 10 lines later and we don't care about these these 10 lines and we want to start to start running the code line by line let's say from line 12 here thank you for watching please remember that this series on python tutorial is going to continue so please make sure to subscribe and click the bell next to it to be notified of every new video and also if you want to talk about pycharm debugger in more details please let me know in the comments below